welcome to Behind the Gavel. I'm Laurie Jennings, Public Information Officer for Low Marine Township. And as always, I'm joined by Board of Commissioners President Dan Bernheim. Welcome, Dan, and thank you for joining me today. Uh, it's always a pleasure, Laurie. It's been a busy month since we've last been together with a number of updates on important topics. So let's jump right in. Besides, there's not much to talk about with the Phillies right now. Well, unless you're applying for the application to play center field, you're probably right. The Board of Commissioners voted to um, accept two of Manager McNeely's nominations for senior staff positions. First, there's Assistant Township Manager and then the Director of Parking Services. And if you'll forgive me, Dan, I can report that Mr. Smith is coming to Lower Marion. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed. That, that's, that's a good line, Laura. I'm, I'm very proud of you. Yeah, we're, we're really lucky. Um, uh, Jeff Smith, who had been uh, formerly the uh, borough manager in media for I think about 20 years, and then moved down to Florida where he was working in, in Sarasota as a county se um, se um, senior manager. And in Florida, the counties operate similar to the municipalities do here. And he was looking to relocate just at a time that we had an opening. So we're really very lucky that uh, we were able to lure uh, Jeff to come back to the Northeast. And he will be starting, starting very soon and knows that he's got some difficult shoes to, to fill as uh, Bob, Bob Duncan you know, steps into the world of retirement. For sure. I am, Jeff will be starting before this show airs, so um, if anyone would like to give him a call and meet him, that would be great. I'm sure he'd be uh, more, more than welcome, and he's going to uh, get used to very fast to getting a lot of calls and emails from, from my colleagues on the board. For sure. So there's going to be a little bit of overlap time and some cross-training with Bob Duncan, so that will be more than valuable. And what are your thoughts on that? Well, look, trying to fill the, the position that, that Bob has um, created as, as assistant manager is it, just going to be beyond difficult. And Jeff understands that, and, and, and we, we all understand that as well. But having somebody with his experience being able to sit next to Bob and, and learn is going to really enhance the learning curve you know, that he's going to go to. And as uh, I said to Bob, as he's leaving, we know where he lives, and he's such the guy, as you well know, that if somebody needs some information to tap into his institutional knowledge, Jeff won't have to hesitate to do that. But uh, working side by side from Bob will be invaluable for him. And he's surely going to be missed. Uh, we, we be beyond any doubt what's, what's, whatsoever. By the residents, by the staff, by the commissioners. He's not only invaluable in his institutional knowledge, but he's a great guy at the same time. Well, well without a doubt. I, I think uh, you may have noted uh, um, I was able to get the Mainline Times to, to you know, publish something I wrote, and I said that which we will most miss about miss most about Bob is Bob. Right. Uh, he is, uh, you know, just a, a pleasure to deal with, and it, it is a usual situation: a 7 a.m. email that's followed up by an 8 p.m. email. <laughs> and my, I think my comment was, if we could bottle both his demeanor and his dedication and put that on the market, we could all retire. <laughs> The board also accepted a nomination of Mr. McNeely of John Collins as Director of Parking Services, and he's going to replace Tom Pintandy, who retired in January. So what can you tell us about Mr. Collins? Well, th those are other difficult shoes to fill. Tom, Tom's been around for, for a long, long time, and then, you know, once again, you know, we're able to attract talent. People want to work for Lower Marion. I mean, we are, we are who we are. I, I've stated a number of times that <laughs> in different positions that I've held, it, uh, be it uh, on the county level, at the head of uh, commissioner associations, or even on the state level, everybody says, how do you do it in Lower Marion? So the fact that we are able to get John, who's from Pittsburgh, is about 30 years in, in parking. He's handled things such as uh, the University of Pittsburgh, uh, parking there, and Children's Hospital out there. So if he's capable of doing that, he'll fill the shoes here, you know, quite well. So once again, we're really glad that we have somebody with experience who knows what they're doing to, to fill that really very important position. Absolutely. Well, we're stealing, still dealing with COVID here in the township, but it's important that we're fully staffed and the world's beginning to open back up, and so we need to be ready to go. Well, in, well indeed. Uh, I think one of the um, attributes of Lower Marion is that we really haven't missed a beat throughout all of this. 
and uh, I know we might be touching upon this a little bit later, that's due to the, to the folks who, who, who work here in the township. Right. So finally, on the last personnel issue, the board voted to approve a contract with the township's FOP Lodge number 28. So what are the terms of the agreement? So uh, first, I think it needs to be recognized that uh, you know, good cop, bad cop out there in the world today, we're really lucky in Lower Marion that we have a police force of good cops and who are extraordinarily dedicated I as to what they do and really very highly trained as what they do. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of a tangent off, off your question, um, in recent conversations with our superintendent with all that's going on, on in the world, he noted to me that included in the training is that whenever there's an incident that's out there in the world that we read about, that they triage it internally here, that our own police you know, look forward to their, their own training. So w we try to make sure that we, we do the best we can. There are only so many dollars to go around. There's a certain reality to it. So the, our public safety is about 42% of our overall budget. So the new contract covers from uh, 2021 through 2022. And there are increases about 3% in 2021 and 3.25 uh, in 2022, which translates to over you know half million dollars the first year and about uh, you know 568 thousand dollars the next. So it's you know a, a considerable size, and included within the contract we have new policies including paternal you know leave. Maternity leave, I think, is 12 weeks, and paternal leave you know, is, is two weeks. Um, there are also uh, <coughs> new uh, segments regarding holidays, as well as things such as uniform allowances, and we have also changed the residency requirement. We've eliminated it, so it's gonna increase the uh, pool from which we can go ahead and recruit some other talented, qualified people to join what we consider to be a first-rate police force. They certainly are. And the board approved, as they always do, a resolution in April recognizing Public Service Rec Recognition Week in May. That resolution takes on a bit more significance this year, doesn't it? Boy, what an understatement. So I had the privilege of reading the proclamation ju just uh, la last evening, as a matter of fact, and it acknowledges our police and our, all of our staff within within the township, as well, you know, in our public works um, department and all of their personnel. And as I said a couple minutes ago, we didn't miss a beat throughout this entire pandemic thus far. And think about it, you know, all of your trash has been picked up and imagine one person on a trash truck tests positive, everybody else then has got a quarantine and we've been able to juggle and make sure that everybody's out there. And that's just not in the public works, that's in all, all of the other um, you know, fields of endeavor in which we provide services. So being able to acknowledge that just with a proclamation, and I, I think that my statement was, you know, the mere thank you during the month of May just doesn't do it. It's mm -hmm. a thank you every single day. And it's not just from the Board of Commissioners, it's from everyone in the township who truly appreciates the people that make where we live such a great place to live. Absolutely, for sure. Well, we have to take a break, but please stay tuned. There's more to come here on Behind the Gavel, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Behind the Gavel. I'm Lori Jennings here with Board President Dan Bernheim. Dan, thanks again for being with me today. Uh, always a pleasure, Lori. Well, it's time for our monthly COVID update. And once more, how are we doing with our fight against COVID-19? Well, we seem to take a step forward, step backwards. And when you look at the numbers and you try to figure out what the figures mean. So in, in Lower Marion, we find that positivity rate seems to be uh, climbing a little bit. We're at about 2.43%. Keep in mind, under 5% was considered you know, herd immunity, but back in March or middle of March, we were at about 1.9%. And countywide, the positivity rates jumped to 8.2%, where again, back in mid-March, it was at 5.2%. So there seems to be that t upward tick there but you know, otherwise, you know, people are out there getting you know, vaccinated and that is increasing a little bit slower than many of us would like, 
but uh, that you know, needs to step it up so that we can get close to that uh, return to, to normal phase and, and we'll get there, but we still need to be really very, very diligent about what we're doing with maintaining masks, maintaining our social distances, and the more people get vaccinated, the faster we're gonna get back to life as we knew it uh, a, a year and change ago. Absolutely. And last mm. month we reported on the reopening of our six libraries to in-person visits. How's that going so far? Well, I ran into Dave Blanchard, who was the head of our, our libraries, and asked him that very question. And he said it was excellent, that uh, things were working smoothly. And her, I've heard from a lot of members of uh, our, our public, uh, all of them were thrilled that the libraries were opened, and they were nothing but compliments. So they say, you know, no news is good news, but all good news is really good news. So the, the response that we've got has, has been excellent, and hopefully that's, you know, signs of things to come with, with other elements, you know, both at the township and on a much, much wider range. Absolutely. Based on that information, how are plans proceeding for further opening of township facilities? Well, we've been contemplating that, what, what we're going to have to do. And it's going to have to be tied to when people are able to get the vaccine, not just when they're available to get it, but when the, you know, they're actually able to go ahead and ha get it. Because you get you know, vaccine one, then you get the second shot, and then there's a period of time. So we're trying to calculate when that will reasonably take place, see if we can get a target date in and around there. And like every other decision throughout this pandemic, what we say today is subject to review tomorrow. But you know, we're, we're looking at it very closely to see what we can do. And as you know, there recently was the drawback with the Johnson & Johnson. And while I'm certainly not qualified to make any comments about that substantively, the reality is that causes some people to have hesitation, understandable. But the other two vaccines, Moderna and Pfizer, are clearly safe. And people clearly need to go ahead and do that so we can move forward. Sure. A quick note on our businesses. The township has extended the deadline to file and pay business privilege and mercantile taxes until May 17th to match the recent IRS ruling of the same effect. Yeah, that, that, that just seemed to make sense. We, we were in, in lockstep when, when that happened before. So to be able to do that again so people can coordinate their own filing of taxes and it, it, it has no adverse impact to the township. So it's an, an accommodation that that we made you know immediately in, in order to get everybody make it easier for everyone to get their taxes you know completed i'm sure that the business appreciate the extra time to do that i would imagine they might finally this month <coughs> dan an update on of sorts of an electrical vehicles last month we spoke about the board's discussion on the replacement of end of life cycle vehicles with electric vehicles and the board came to a consensus on this issue. So what was that? Well, let's look at this first from 20,000 feet where we're talking about something like carbon neutrality. It, we're, we're at the point, it's not a matter of when we do this, but how we do this. And interestingly, as I was driving over here to meet you today, I heard where China, China has indicated that by 2060, they in, intend to be carbon neutral. Now yeah. here's a country that still uses a large quantity of coal. So the question becomes, what do we do and at which level? So how do we do this in the municipality? And one of the issues have been electric vehicles. Uh, we're fortunate that our Department of Public Works, Paul McElhenney, spent a ton of time pulling out information to educate us for us because certain commissioners were pushing, say, well, why can't we do this, for example, with police cars? A police car has so much electrical equipment in it and has certain requirements as to how fast they go from you know zero to 60. They need to be able to jump certain curbs. And right now the uh, electric vehicles just don't meet the standards. We tried it with hybrids, but the results came in that we still need to wait for technology to, to catch up. So the other questions were, all right, can we retrofit or not retrofit, when we go ahead and we take cars and we you know, utilize them for you know, parks and recreation, for building and planning, can we look to electric vehicles there? And so we were examining those costs on what would be the saving just on fuel, what would be the savings on, you know, with electric, 
putting in electric chargers, I think came out at $120,000. So we were looking at the out-of-pocket charges. We did an analysis on gas emission charges to try to figure out, all right, what can we do to do our part that makes economic sense and it's actually more than just a feel-good moment, but starts in, in, in that process. So true to form, we've put off that decision a little bit. <laughs> we need a little bit more data so that we can you know, analyze it and do something that, that is reasonable and it's not just, oh, we're doing this just to show we're doing it, but it actually makes sense and ha has an impact. But we're all headed there. If you don't recognize that, wake up because that, that's where we're going. Well, I think that's great. It's always great to take more time and try to figure out how to do it, everything the best way. Well, we, as said, it, it's a difficult decision because at the municipality, again, there's a limit of what we can do f with, with dollars and cents and that the real impact isn't, you know, while electric vehicles are certainly important and everybody's moving in that trend, the real impact has got to be the change in industry. Right. if you're going to do anything to become carbon neutral. That's what needs to be done. We don't control that at all, right. but we will do what we can to, to do our part. Right. So is there anything else you'd like our viewers to know before we sign off this month? Well, probably one of the hottest topics that has hit the email chain, and I'm sure you have seen it, has been the, the fields for the, the new middle school that uh, the school district is putting out on the western part of the township. And when they acquired the property, it did not by itself have adequate place for fields. So they acquired two other properties in, in close proximity. And when they put in their plans for fields, it required that they remove about 400 trees. And understandably, members of the public were uh, adverse to that and said, what other options are there? And the reality is there aren't a lot of fields that are out there. There's not a lot of open space. So I met with the president of the school board and with Mr. Copeland and their council. It was joined with two of my colleagues, Vice President Gavrin and Commissioner uh, Courtney uh, and Chris Leswing. Uh, and we stated, look, this is a community problem. We're not one, just one board or, or, or the other. And we need to see if we can find a plan B which provides the fields the schools think are necessary for educational purposes as well as for the sports teams and that we can do it without you know, disturbing the environment by removing 400 trees and just saying that we're going to replant some there, some elsewhere. And my comment to them, you know, all the brain power in this room, except for myself, got to be able to come up with a better solution. So we are indeed working on that cooperatively because everybody hears what the community concerns are and, and they're legitimate. So um, I am uh, cautiously optimistic that we will figure something out. And I just wanted to make comment to that and thank members of the school board who seem to be committed to looking for, for a, an alternative plan as well. Yeah, that's great. Well, that will have to do it for this edition of Behind the Gavel. Thank you, Dan, for your time today. Again, Lori, always a pleasure. And thank you, Lower Marion, for watching. I'm Lori Jennings, Public Information Officer for Lower Marion Township. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.